What's up, Arkin family? So today's video is the kickoff to fall DIYs on my channel. I like to start early so that you guys can find the items you need and have an idea of what you want to decorate with going into the season. You guys need to sound off in the comments below and let me know if you want to see Halloween soon. With that being said, let's begin. For a first project, grab a three pack of aluminum pie pans from Dollar Tree. Put some glue on the rim of the pan and glue the lid on with the paper side facing up. I'm mixing two paints together to try to get a pumpkin pie color that I then paint on the lid. I don't worry too much about the edges because that will be covered up. Next up, I purchased some Crayola Model Magic from Dollar Tree. I roll the clay in my hands to get a snake shape. Once it's long enough, I pour some hot glue on the edge of the lid and then glue down the Model Magic. As I glue it down, I smush it into the lid. I then took a fork and started to make indents inside of the Model Magic to make it look more like dough. I just painted this with some paints I mixed together to create a dough-like color. If you want a shiny look to your pie, add a layer of glossy Mod Podge. I only did this to one of the pies I made. Next up, you're going to need spackle. Dollar Tree carries spackle. If you do not need a lot, you can get it from Dollar Tree. But I recommend this Adap spackle. It's a lightweight spackle. You get more bang for your buck, and it's my favorite one to use when making fake sweets. You'll need some piping bags and icing tips. You can find these at Dollar Tree. Put your spackle inside of the piping bag and then squeeze this right on top of your pumpkin pie. The Mod Podge dries clear and you are left with these adorable fake pumpkin pies. They're so easy to do and you can make three of them for under $7. The next time you're in Dollar Tree, purchase four of these pumpkin hanging signs, as well as a broom. You're gonna remove your handle from the broom. Then remove the rope that is attached to the signs. I figure out the layout of how I want my pumpkins to be attached before gluing them. Then I start to add my glue. I want them in the perfect spots. I also make sure I leave at least five inches of broomstick showing at the bottom. To attach my pumpkins to the broomstick, I'm using a mixture of E6000 and hot glue. You wanna make sure that you're using a heavy duty glue because hot glue melts in high heat. So if by chance it's hot outside, you don't want it, the broomstick falling off of the pumpkins. I then like to to use some E6000 on the sides of the broomstick. Now I purchased two round styrofoam pieces and a planter from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be gluing my styrofoam pieces to the inside of my planter by using some hot glue. You can really go with any shape that you like. Next up, you're gonna push your broomstick through the styrofoam. You need the bottom to be weighted, especially if this is going outside. So I just use some Dollar Tree stones to weigh the bottom. On top of the rocks, I'm placing some moss that I got from Dollar Tree just because I thought that this would give it a nicer look. You can find some really cute floral pumpkin picks at Dollar Tree right now. I placed a few of them at the bottom of my planter. And finally, I just placed one line of rope on my planter. I just thought it would look pretty this way. That's how I made this substantial piece using Dollar Tree products. And you can keep the cost of this under $10. You can use this inside or outside. It's completely up to you. You guys are gonna love this. Pick up some square styrofoam pieces from Dollar Tree as well as one of their cube styrofoam pieces. I ended up cutting off about half an inch of the thicker cube styrofoam. Now I'm gonna be using some brown craft foam I got for 99 cents at Hobby Lobby. It's cheaper there, you get a bigger piece and you can actually find it. I'm tracing the sides, top and bottom of my square pieces of foam. I then cut those pieces out. I'm also using a white piece of craft foam for the cube shape. Same thing, I trace the sides, top and bottom and then cut those pieces with my scissor. Next up, I use hot glue to start attaching my craft foam to the foam pieces. You can use foam glue for this if you like. Sometimes Dollar Tree has it. I had leftover brown craft foam. I cut out pieces that are bigger than the cube but smaller than the squares. It's time to glue everything together. I start by attaching one of the squares and cube together. I then place those extra pieces of craft foam I cut out on top of the cube. And then I place my last piece of square foam onto the cube. I'm gonna be using 3D dimensional fabric paint. I'm making cute decorative s'mores. I use the brown paint to define the graham crackers. I do the little lines that are in graham crackers and the little holes. 
If there are areas where foam is peeking through, I also use the paint to cover up these areas. Now Dollar Tree carries puff paint, you can use that, but I prefer 3D dimensional paint, which is very similar to puff paint, but the difference is, is it holds its shape, it remains 3D. I then use my black 3D paint to paint on cute little marshmallow faces, and I decided to do a chocolate drip, so I put the brown paint over the little craft foam that's supposed to be the chocolate, and then bring it down to create the drip. I gave my s'mores cute little cheeks by painting them with a light pink paint. I made so many s'mores in different sizes. All you have to do is cut the Dollar Tree foam to get the size that you like. These are adorable and my favorite DIY in this video. I love the way that they turned out. Our next DIY, you're going to need one of the half styrofoam balls from Dollar Tree, some disposable bags, your spackle, and this time around I'm using a flower drop tip I got for 99 cents at Hobby Lobby. I go ahead and fill up my piping bag with the spackle. What you're going to do is you're going to get a styrofoam plate and you are going to put some spackle down and place your styrofoam ball on top of the spackle. You treat the spackle as if it were icing. You just go ahead and create a little design around your styrofoam ball. So I just keep going around it until I get this whipped cream look. Fall is one of the rare times I use real ingredients for my mug toppers. I'm going to be using cinnamon sticks and cinnamon. I place cinnamon sticks inside of the spackle and then pour some cinnamon with my fingers on top of the spackle. I want a caramel drizzle to make this. I'm using my Mod Podge in the glossy finish and some paint. I pour it inside of a sandwich bag. I tend to do more Mod Podge than paint. You just kind of eyeball it. I use my fingers to knead the bag. This mixes the glue and the paint together. Once it's mixed, I cut the tip of the bag. The paint will then come out and I just drizzle it right over my speckle. I chose a clear glass from Dollar Tree that I'm going to paint the inside of so that it is a pumpkin spice color. I've actually never had pumpkin spice, so if this is not the correct color, I'm just going based off of what I think it would look like. Wait 24 hours before doing this next step. You're gonna take your scissors and cut the styrofoam around your spackle. And then you can place this directly on the mug. Now you want to wait at least a week before you then do this next step. You can then take off that styrofoam from the bottom of the topper and everything will stay in place but you got to wait a week because you really need everything to harden I got these pumpkin spice knockoff Starbucks labels from Etsy and I printed them out I'll link the seller I used down below for you guys but you can always go to Starbucks and cut out the image that's on your cup I'm gluing this to the front of my glass these are just oh my gosh they're just so cute mug toppers are the reason why I love to make fake sweets they started my love for it. I just I just think it's so cute. Dollar Tree right now actually has in these tabletop decor pieces that I feel like you can pair with the spackle and make it look really cute as well. So I ended up doing it to this spice it up one and then this fall mug one. I just put the spackle, the cinnamon, and this is how it looks. Right now Dollar Tree has these home pumpkin signs. You can use these instead of the four pumpkins if you want to make a smaller version of that. You essentially do the same thing you get a planter some craft foam I'm cutting my craft foam in half because I'm going to be making two of these. This time around, instead of using a broomstick, I'm using these 12 inch pieces of craft wood. I push it through the foam, create a dent. I then pour some glue inside of that dent and then push my craft wood again through it. I just really want it to be nice and secure inside of there. And then I do the same thing, stones at the bottom and moss. After that, just glue your home sign to the piece of wood and you're good to go. Super simple and really nice. Here's an easy model magic DIY. Roll your model magic into a snake shape again and then roll it together so it creates a donut shape. I then tried my best to mix together a apple cider donut color, which was a little bit hard. I used folk art paint in golden glow and then Anita paint in moccasin brown. I can't say it was the perfect apple cider color, so once I had my first layer down, I decided to stipple on the moccasin brown color because I needed to darken it up a bit, so I just kind of kept messing around with the paint and then I went in with the golden oak color and I put it mainly around the sides of the donut to really make it look like an apple cider donut now I'm gonna sprinkle on some fake sugar I'll link the seller that I bought this from down below I got it from Etsy what you do is you'll put a clear glue on top of the donut and then sprinkle on the sugar 
I'll be placing my donuts inside of these rectangular pans I got from Dollar Tree. They were too big for the six donuts I made, so I made the pan smaller by cutting one in half and then gluing the halves together. That's how I made these adorable fake apple cider donuts. Don't place these inside of the kitchen. Maybe put something that says do not eat if there's somebody in your house that you think might eat these. For our next DIY, I'm going to be using one of these rolls of foam from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut them down into little pieces. To cut through the foam, I used a kitchen knife and I worked the knife in very slowly. You don't want to rush this. To make it easy to paint the foam, I'm going to put some bamboo skewers through the foam and then I start to paint them with my 3D dimensional paint. I painted on little pink cheeks with that same pink paint that I used earlier and that's how I made some mini marshmallows. This was super inexpensive and easy to do. But we're going to make this even cuter. I purchased a wood crate from Dollar Tree and I just went ahead and painted it. Literally painted whatever color you want. Now I'm going to take some model magic and roll it out. I then take a square shaped cookie cutter and cut out the model magic. I'm going to be creating a graham cracker. I go in with my bamboo skewer and start to create the design that I need for my graham cracker. With the rest of the clay I have left, I create a rectangle shape and then smaller rectangles that I place on top of the bigger one to make it look like chocolate. Chocolate. Once the dough is dried, you can then paint your graham cracker and chocolate. Then put everything together. I put some tissues on the bottom of the crate to dummy it up, and then I placed my marshmallows, graham crackers, and chocolate. I ended up making a little sign that if I remember, I'll link down below, that I cut out and glued to the front of my crate. And this is just one of the cutest pieces of decor I've ever made. It's so adorable and would work really, really well in a tear tray. Go to Dollar Tree and pick up one of their barrel planters. I painted this with my folk art paint in golden glow and right away I transformed it for fall. You can leave it the color it already is but this I feel like more has that fall vibe and then I filled it up with some fake apples. That was literally it. It was super cute this way. The other thing you can do is get two barrels. I painted mine again with the golden glow color and then glue those two together to get a whole barrel. You guys wanted a decorative stool not made out of jungle blocks, so that's what we're doing. I got these 12 inch craft wood pieces from Dollar Tree, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut them in an angle. The best way to do this without a power tool is with some miter shears, and this is what Matt is trying to show you. You can do it, it's just that you have to put a lot of work into it, but it's possible. A hand saw you can do it too, but you just gotta make sure you're getting all of them in the perfect angle. We use two craft wood pieces to cut out four seven inch pieces that have have those angles and it was a 75 degree angle now I'm gonna use two of these circular wood plaques from Walmart they were like about a dollar when I bought them a while ago I use wood glue to attach them to each other Dollar Tree has wood plaques as well I was just using these because this is what I have on hand then I start to glue on my legs I have four of them like I said to glue them I used wood glue I then picked up some popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree and I cut the top and bottom of them in that 75 degree angle using my miter shears. I'm able to do it with popsicle sticks but the bigger piece of wood that's that's harder. I did this to four popsicle sticks and I used again my wood glue to attach them to the legs. I did a lot of wood glue because I wanted to make sure they weren't going anywhere. The paint I used for my stool is apple barrel paint in nutmeg brown. I watered it down a bit so I got more of a stained look versus something that was too opaque. If you're able to find these circle plaques from Dollar Tree, you can make a stool for around $5. Remember, you're gonna have a bunch of jumbo popsicle sticks left over that you can make multiple stools with. You can use this as a decorative piece or leave it just as it is. The only thing that could actually sit on this is possibly your hamster. Don't, don't try sitting on it. You can't do a fall DIY without a wreath. So I'm just going to be using pumpkins for this. I got these ones at Hobby Lobby. I paid about the same price I would pay at Dollar Tree. If you wait till they're half off, you're going to pay a dollar. And I chose different styles of paints that make a pretty gradient. And then the gold one I'm going to use for the stems. So what I do is I just paint all my pumpkins pumpkins with these colors. I'm using three pumpkins for each color. So I'm going to have white, pink, a orange color, and then like a darker orange color. And then the stems I painted gold. 
I then glue all of my pumpkins together using some hot glue. I made sure I put like a good amount so they would stick to each other and I used my hot glue setting low which makes it easier to attach all of these. I then pushed my stems back into the pumpkins and that was it. I hung this off of a command hook. Uh, you can add some twine around this to hang it by something else if you want to. This is inspired by Life with Liv and Viv. I'll link their Instagram down below. Dollar Tree DIY had reposted it and I just thought it was so beautiful and I knew I wanted to make one. Right now Dollar Tree is carrying decorative books. They have so many cute designs but I really like this one and I thought it would pair well with these hanging signs that Dollar Tree has right now. I was trying to think of what I can do with this and what I got right now is using it with the books and or maybe eventually I will do some type of garland with them. However I glued that pie piece to the top of my books and then I got this wood bead from Dollar Tree. I'm going to pair a little piece with the books and then I put a pumpkin. So it's just an idea idea of how to spruce up the book a little more than just the books on its own. You want to get some Mod Podge as well as a paint that's a caramel color. I'm using Deco Art Paint in Honey Brown and I got it at Hobby Lobby. You want a 50-50 ratio of Mod Podge and paint. Also you want to use Mod Podge with a glossy finish. Now you're going to need fake apples for this DIY. The green ones I got from Dollar Tree and the red ones I got from Hobby Lobby. Since filming this video, I have not seen any fake apples at Dollar Tree, so get them at Hobby Lobby. You get more bang for your buck anyway. Then you're going to need some wooden dowels. I cut one of the ends at an angle to make it easier to put through my apple. You're going to be dipping your apple into your mixture. Have some parchment paper on hand that you can place your apples on top of. This makes it so when you remove the apple from the parchment paper, the paint doesn't come off with it. You just roll your apple around to get a nice even coverage. After the first layer of paint has dried, I recommend going in with another layer of paint. Now to mimic fake nuts, I'm using Kaylee K. Cobb litter. Basically, this is hamster bedding um, and it doesn't have a scent to it. Don't worry. It just... It's just hamster bedding, but it's the perfect fake nuts for this. This particular DIY was my favorite DIY I did last year for fall, so I had to reshare it. You get these cute fake apples that are perfect for decor. And again, if you're afraid somebody, I, I'm just throwing this out there because I don't want somebody yelling at me because somebody ate their fake food. If you think somebody's gonna eat your fake food, put do not eat near it. Okay, for the next DIY, we're gonna be using the wood planks yet again, as well as the longer wood planks, uh, slats, whatever you wanna call them that you can get from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use these pieces to create a box I can use as a centerpiece. So for the sides of my box, I use the square wooden planks. For the front and the back of the box, I use the longer, bigger pieces of wood. And I do use two of those longer pieces of wood for the front and the back. And I kind of secure them in place by using another wooden plank that I just place on the inside of the box. So you can't see it, but it's there to add extra security to all of this. Again, I used hot glue, but I recommend using wood glue. So I ended up using four of the wooden square planks total, and then four of the bigger wooden pieces total. If you want to, you can glue wooden pieces to the bottom of your box. I decided not to do that, but if you do do that, it makes it easy to move the box around without spilling whatever you put in the inside out. I stained the wood off camera using that early American Verithane stain. And to the front of the box, I'm gonna glue on a chalkboard. I also got this from Dollar Tree and I stained it using the Verithane stain. I removed the stand off of the chalkboard piece and then I placed a vinyl piece that I cut out. You can put whatever you want. I put Smith Family Pumpkin Pash, a Savage 2020. You can do something generic like I did or you can do something more detailed. It's up to you. I absolutely love what the chalkboard does for this box. It takes it from being just a regular plain box into something that is gorgeous and in my opinion, a conversation starter. I can see people being like, where did you get that from? And you're like, I made it myself. I added some Dollar Tree floral to my box as well as real floral that I actually got at a wedding the weekend before. I love the way that this turned out. 
Right now, Dollar Tree has these ceramic pumpkins that look knitted. They can be hard to paint. I'm going to share with you how to do it so they still look nice. You need at least three paints, two that are similar in color, but one will be a little bit lighter and one will be darker. Then you just need a plain white paint. I recommend using a paint sponge to paint. You're going to start off with your base color. This is going to be the lighter of the two similar colors. Paint the entire pumpkin with that base color. While the paint is still wet, go in with your darker color and you're going to use this to shade in different areas or just paint in areas that you want there to be a darker color and you want to do this when the paint is still wet so that both colors blend in real nicely together now dip your paint sponge in white paint and then lightly glide the brush over the pumpkin and this is going to highlight the higher areas of the pumpkin so basically the part that looks knitted this is going to highlight it so it stands out more doesn't matter the colors you use you just want to do the same concept a base color a darker color and then white this time around I had this green paint and I didn't have a color darker that was similar to that so I just mixed in some black paint with the green to get the darker green that I needed and then I went in with the white paint as usual this is mainly for the main base of the pumpkin for the stem of the pumpkin you don't have to do that for instance this particular pumpkin I decided to go with a gold and brown stem that's how you paint these knitted pumpkins the easier way beside having to paint every little detail by hand. It would get really repetitive. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That is it. I will see you guys next time. Again, let me know if you want to see Halloween soon. Take care. Bye.